Since 2004, in the Lee Street constructed wetlands, there's been a significant dieback in the vegetation, in-stream vegetation, because of the development of these pyritic sediments, these black anoxic sediments, and the vegetation essentially just want to get out of it, so they, they move to the edges of the wetland. Through us managing these black oozes, it'll improve the water quality coming out of the wetland. This particular wetland system has been constructed to manage nutrient levels coming off uh, the nearby shopping centre and urban areas and stop those nutrients going into the Canning River here. It's a large series of wetlands which filter out the nutrients and produce clean water at the other side of the discharge site so the water going into the canning is much cleaner. This black material is called monosulphide. I'm monosulphide black ooze. It accumulates in drainage systems over time where we do urban development or where we do lots of land clearing, we create conditions where this black ooze develops very large amounts and becomes quite an environmental hazard for downstream water bodies. So the wetland has a positive environmental value in terms of protecting the river, but if not managed, the material that accumulates in the wetlands over time may be remobilised and moved downstream into the river. So it's part of the overall management of the wetlands that the sludge has to be removed periodically. This area that we're in is within the Canning River Regional Park, so it's got a very high conservation value, very passionate community volunteers around this area as well. So we needed to be really mindful that we weren't going to damage the environment in any way while doing this project. Using this method, I guess, gave us the opportunity to do that. You can currently see we've got some pretty black oozy sediment. It's just a slow pass to suck it in. We're in about 400 mil of water with about 300 depth of sediment. It's very, very heavy. We need to cut through it to remove it. OK, this is a cutter head. Um, it's a, got an impeller style pump and also a Part of the cutter head actually rotates that so gravitates the sediment back into the centre of the pump. That keeps the bottom blade of the cutter head off the clay liner of the pond so that we don't damage the clay liner. It runs on a travel wire system, so we run what we call a banjo wire across the pond at each end and then feed a travel wire through the dredge similar to a uh, punt style. Very minimal footprint on the environment, which is good. Allows us to do jobs like this. We've had this set up and running with a wren sitting on a nest next to us on about six eggs. Nice and easy to launch in and out and no damage to the environment, so we're good on that front. Once we've removed this goo out of here, they're going to be able to replant and re-establish the reed growth, because at this stage all these centre areas weren't growing due to the amount of sediment that's come in here. Once we've sucked the sediment through the machine, it goes through a set of floating pipes that follow the dredge and then goes onto a land base six inch pipe back to the dewatering area where we inject a separating agent and then it goes into the dewatering bag, traps the sediment and you end up with a nice clear clean filtrate coming back out. These are our dewatering tubes. So this is where the sediment gets pumped into after being dosed. The bags are basically a permeable filtering bag. You get a, a small build-up of fines on the inside of the bag as a second layer of filtering. And periodically, you need to give it a small tap just to release some of the extra pieces. Just helps drain, drain the sediment. And then you can see from what you saw going in the dredge, is this is a direct feed straight off the bag. What The black has stayed inside. And that's our filtrate. After they've dewatered themselves and the project's complete, the bags are then left to dry out. And then they're a sacrificial bag, so they're cut open and then you, the sediment inside is dried and basically can be loaded away, used as landfill, fertiliser, or treated and then reused somewhere else.
I mean, you can see the water quality coming out of it. It's quite clear. There's a very, very small amount of fines. This is what we're returning back to the wetlands after removing all the sediment. So you can see it's uh, a lot different than uh, the original that you saw going in the front of the dredge. We really wanted to make sure that we weren't going to damage the existing vegetation, so we've been really careful with locating of the pipes. And also in this area where we've got the desludging bags in this uh, bunded area here, this was a completely bare area to start off with, and it was good that we were able to fit this into this relatively confined area um, so that we could minimise the footprint and, I guess, the impact of the activity. It'll make for a lot healthier waterway and uh, more plant life and better filtration when eventually that runs back out to the Canning River so we get a better quality of water going out to the river too. So a win in all situations there. Eh?